Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. In today's video, I'm very excited to show you a way we can easily launch PC games on the Retroid Pocket 5 or any Android device you might be using, including, yes, Grand Theft Auto 5. So let's jump into the app you need right now. The link in the description will take you to the Game Hub website. Game Hub is made by the same company who make the Game Sir controllers for Android devices. And I have heard some conflicting reports that they may not be the most trustworthy people. So if you don't feel comfortable installing this for yourself, that is fine. Let me be your guinea pig in this video and you can decide by yourself if you want to take the plunge or not. But I will install it for you, run you through everything and show you how it works. So first of all, let's hit the Android download button, which of course is going to download the file. Once it's done, we can hit the open button and install. This will install the Game Hub application. And from here, it's pretty easy to get everything set up and running. So let's click open. And this app is very similar to the Steam Deck interface. So if you're used to using a Steam Deck, you're going to feel right at home here. First of all, you need to sign in. Immediately, it has controller support right out of the box. You can choose whether you want to sign in with email, Google, or your Apple ID. Again, be conscious of who you're giving this information to, so it is completely up to you to decide whether you're comfortable giving this information away or not. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to assume that you want to, or you at least just want to see me do it, and let's jump in. So I've just entered my information. Now we need to choose an emoji for our profile icon. As this is the Ryan Retro channel, we're of course going to pick some nice retro game controller like that. Then we'll push A again, or B on my device to continue. Now we need to make a display name. Unfortunately, my name is too long, so I'll be Ryan Retro. And we now need to grant some permissions to the app so that it can launch our games and make some changes to our device. So once again, check that you're comfortable with the permissions and if you are, let's accept them. After accepting the permissions, you are now in the Game Hub app and it is glorious. So right away, you're presented with tons of different games you could launch if you own them already. There are also demos we can install, which we will try in a minute. And along the top of the screen here, you're going to see some icons. So first of all, this is basically the home page with lots of various different things you can access, such as all your streaming platforms, news, highlights, and games divided into various categories. You can use the bumpers on your controller to move across the different categories along the top. The second one is PC gaming, which includes gaming natively on your device, which is something we will jump into very soon in this video. And also streaming from your PC with something like Moonlight or the built-in Game Hub launcher that does come with Game Hub. Moving on to the next category, you have what looks like a phone and these are all your phone games. So by choosing a game here and pressing the download button, it's going to launch the Play Store where you can install the game you want. And you will then be able to launch it directly from the app. Moving along once again, we have a PlayStation icon so that you can stream your PlayStation games from your PlayStation console to the Retro Pocket 5. Next is the Xbox section, which has both once again streaming from an Xbox console to the Retro Pocket 5 or whatever device you're using. And scrolling down a little bit will also let you access Xbox Cloud Gaming. So if you're a member of the Xbox Game Pass, here you can jump into a game from there. So hitting the play button here will launch the xCloud app. And interestingly, I have the better xCloud extension on my app and it launches me into that no problems. Once again, we'll have to sign in. I just entered my information and now you can see I can play this game with my Ultimate subscription because I do have a Game Pass Ultimate subscription active. So now Game Hub is basically just acting as a launcher for Xbox Game Pass. And as you'll see, there'll be no worries whatsoever. All your controls are mapped and you are ready to jump into a game. And when you're in any game that you launched through the Game Hub app, you can always hit the back button on your device and then you should find an exit button somewhere in there. Whether your device like mine has a dedicated back button or whether that means you need to swipe in from the left or something like that. Moving on to the next tab across the top, we have a cloud tab. This is all of your cloud services in one. So that is Xbox Cloud Gaming, GeForce Now, Amazon Luna, and then once again, we have different categories for different types of games. So this tab would be useful if you have a few different subscriptions going on. Maybe you're subscribed to Xbox and GeForce Now. You can see a few of those games here together and launch whatever you're into. My GeForce Now subscription expired, but you do get a free account. So if I did, for example, want to jump into Need for Speed Heat, I could select that game here, hit the download button, which is going to open the GeForce Now app. 
I'm already logged in because it just basically launched the GeForce app on my device already. And from here, I can jump into a queue to play a game just like normal. And once again, if I want to exit this, I can just hit the back button on my device and it will take me straight back to the Game Hub launcher. So making our way back to the home screen now, let's jump into one of those demos we can pick up and then we'll run into some really big heavy hitting Windows games. You will see the pink demo icon above these games, which means we can simply download and play them. So if I wanted to jump into a game of Battle Shapers, for example, I can hit the download button. Then if you hit the start button on your device or tap the menu button down here or tap your profile icon up here, all three of those will bring up this side menu. Then you can scroll down to things such as download and see how your downloads are doing. Also, if you move down to completed, you will see what Game Hub has already installed for you, including various drivers we're going to need to play our Windows games. We can also move over to game management and here we can uninstall games if we don't want them anymore. So I decided I want to try Electro Ride Prologue instead of Battle Shapers. So here I can hit the uninstall button, confirm, and it will be removed just like that. And we can also see how much storage we've used here. So there's a lot of very basic and simple features which just make the experience lovely. So let's now jump into Electro Ride Prologue which has finished downloading. You'll see right away we have that very familiar Steam Deck style icon that shows the gamepad is connected and all of the background elements have been rendered, set up and are ready to go. We also have this really nice little display inside Game Hub as well, which shows GPU usage, CPU and RAM usage, power consumption and frames per second, as well as this little graph showing how steady the frame rate is. So ideally we want a nice smooth green line here although that is quite difficult to achieve in many games. For all of these tests, I'm going to put my device into high performance mode. And as you'll see in this particular game, we're not getting a very good frame rate. It's around 10 to 12 FPS. But the good news is we can get a much better frame rate in some really impressive Windows games. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So let's back out of this game. Once again, let's push the back button. And here we have the Windows game menu that you're going to see a lot. The first option lets you map controls for various games if you're using a touchscreen device like a phone. The second option lets you mess with the performance settings such as putting frame limits, turning on or off HDR. You might see having a little bit of an effect on the colors in this game. We have a CRT display effect, which is pretty cool. And other things like super resolution, sharpness, the list goes on and on. You can really tweak with this. We then have a nice keyboard display if you need a keyboard in a particular game like when inputting your name at the beginning of character creation, for example. And finally, we have an option to toggle full screen if a game has launched in a window and you want to force it into full screen. And then of course, we can just exit the game we're playing. So now let's go through how to add our own games like Grand Theft Auto, Skyrim and Hades to our devices. Once again, we want to bring up this menu by tapping here, here or the start button. Then we're going to go down to game. And here we have the games that we've installed. So we have the demo we just grabbed. But if we go to this second option, which looks like a PC, here we have the PC game section of the app. And here we can add our own .exe file of any game that you may have grabbed from your computer or anywhere else. So by tapping the plus button, and giving access to access our files, it's going to bring up our file manager. Along the top, here is the internal storage marked as zero. And the second one is the SD card you may have in your device. So I'm going to go to the SD card and navigate to where one of my games is. Here is my Skyrim EXE file. So I'm going to choose that. Game Hub will now attempt to automatically add a cover image, title and description to your game. If your game is named something like Skyrim.exe, it's going to do that perfectly. Mine was named Skyrim SE.exe, so it wasn't able to automatically figure out what it is. But no worries, you could always add that manually if you want. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to skip that step and just jump into the game. Here we have Skyrim Special Edition, and we're going to hit play now. It's now going to initialize, download any firmware it may need. This time it didn't need to download anything, but sometimes you might see it downloading turnip drivers, wine boxes and various other things, and it's all automatic. You don't need to do anything, which is what makes this so fantastic. You'll see the cursor appear on the screen as we're now inside a Windows environment, and we're now going to be natively running this Windows version of Skyrim in our Android devices. Once again, we get that nice little graphic showing all of the different information about our device. 
We have a little loading wheel here, and after waiting a little while for it to load up, we will be into Skyrim, the PC version, on our Android device with no setup or tinkering required at all. You may want to tinker with the settings later if you want to lower the graphics options to get a few more frames per second and other things like that. But that's something you'd have to do on a real PC anyway. But the fact is to just install a game and jump into it is so easy. Let's start a new game and something looks a bit funky with the screen. So I believe I've got that CRT filter on. Let me just toggle those off. That's better. And let's jump into a new game of Skyrim. So here we are in the character creation screen of Skyrim. Of course, we can use the control pad like normal without any setup required. But then when we go to create our character, we're going to need to put in our name. And this is where that keyboard pop-up is really going to help us. So again, let's bring up the menu, go down to the keyboard button. And here we have our nice keyboard we can use to put in our name. Once we're done with that, we can close the keyboard. So as you can see, we're now in the game. Everything's working. The controls are working. The sound is working as well. When I installed Skyrim on Winlater, there was a lot of tweaking I needed to do to get the sound working, to get controls working properly. I had to set up a lot of things that are just working automatically here. Have that Hadvar. The frame rate is fluctuating quite a lot, as you can see by that green graph at the bottom it's not the best experience. So you might want to go into the settings and change the graphics options. But if you've played Skyrim before, you will know that there aren't actually any graphics settings in the game. You need to use the separate launcher in order to access the graphics. So how can we do that in here? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that now. And I'm actually not going to use the launcher that comes with Skyrim. I'm going to use Beth INI, which is a third party tool which allows you to customize some of Skyrim settings. So let's quit out of this. So now instead of launching the game, we're going to hit the settings cog, game settings. And here you have a ton of different settings you can play around with. Similar to Winlater, except here is far more user friendly. And it has a lot of options built in that you can just download from right within the app. But I want to access that Skyrim configurator utility. So what I've done is save that to the download folder on my Retroid Pocket 5. And then when we come into the game settings, we can enter container desktop up here, which is actually going to launch that Windows environment that has our game inside. Coming up here to my computer, you have various drives. And by default, the D drive will be your download folder on your Android device. So navigating through the download folder, I found my Beth INI exe file, which I can open here. And inside this Windows environment, just like on a Windows PC, I can go through and change all my Skyrim settings. So I've gone through, I've configured everything very low. I'm now going to hit the save and exit button, which will then go through and make all these changes. You can see scrolling down here and scrolling along here. And once that's done, it's going to exit out. I'm going to then exit the application like this. I'm going to go back and once again launch Skyrim with the now lower settings. So feel free to do that for any game you may have where you do need to go into Windows and change something. Remember, you can enter the actual Windows container itself, make any changes you need, and then hop back in through the main game menu. But for 99% of games, this will not be necessary because all of those settings will be in the game itself. I just wanted to help you out in case you run into an issue like that, like I did. As with all Windows gaming, making changes like this may make a huge difference. It may make a small difference. You can see I'm still pretty much maxing out my device on these current settings. So it's not going to make a huge difference in this case and more tinkering may be necessary. But what I wanted to show you was that it's so easy to get up and running with Game Hub. So let's now jump into another game that doesn't need any graphical tweaks. And again, I'm going to show you how quick and easy that is. So let's once again, come up to the menu, game, the computer icon, the plus button, and I'm now going to add my Hades EXE file. Here we have the nice icon we can see here. So let's launch that and press play now. The next game I want to show you is Hades, one that runs really, really well. But I picked this one on purpose because it has a problem, one that's really easy to fix. And it wouldn't be a Ryan Retro video if I wasn't giving you a few tips. So what is the issue? Well, the controller doesn't work at all. By default, this game is set up for mouse control. As you can see, the touch screen is affecting the mouse and that is not what we want with a controller device like this. So how do we fix it? It's extremely easy. We just back out of the game. We hit that settings cog, go to game settings. We choose controller and then we just enable this enable D input toggle and that is it. When we jump back into the game now, 
and we try to push some controls, as you can see, they are working perfectly. So if you have any issues with gamepad controls in any of your games, try turning on D input. Play around with the control settings and see which one works for you. In my testing so far, 90% of games just work straight out of the box and a couple of games needed that D input toggle turned on. And that was it. No executable code or environment variables or awkward looking confusing code, just simple toggle switches. And that is why I think this new Game Hub app is fantastic. You can see we have basically a locked 60 frames per second in this game. Without any tinkering at all so far, we're at around 40 to 60 frames per second, mostly being quite solidly 60. It seems like we might have V-Sync enabled here, as on WinLater I was getting well over 120 frames per second. So that is something we could look into, but just launching the app, no tinkering whatsoever, we have basically a locked on 60 frames per second. And let's bring this video home with one final game. Yes, the one you've all been waiting for, Grand Theft Auto 5 on Android. So once again, we're going to push the plus button, navigate to where we saved our Grand Theft Auto 5 launcher and launch the game. I selected the Grand Theft Auto 5 launcher. It has automatically found the cover image, the name and the description. Although unfortunately, these two fields are limited with how many characters they can hold and almost all games are too long to fit. So this is something I think they do need to address in an upcoming update but it's no big deal. Let's confirm. Here you can see it's downloading a few drivers we might need. It took a matter of seconds. And now once we go back to our game library, here we have Grand Theft Auto 5 or Grand Thev, as it might be called here, <laughs> ready to go. So let's jump into it. You simply need to hit the play now button and you are going to be playing Grand Theft Auto 5 on your Android device. And here it is guys, Grand Theft Auto 5 on our Android devices. This is not game streaming, this is running on our Android device. You can see the frame rate fluctuating quite a lot, mostly in the 40s when not much is happening, but dropping down when more is going on. This is just crazy to me that we're playing GTA 5 on our handheld devices like this. Performance is going to massively depend on the hardware you're running. I'm running the Retro Pocket 5 here with the Snapdragon 865 chip. It's not the best out there, of course, if you have an 8 Gen 2, 8 Gen 3, 8 Elite, something like that, you're going to have better performance. And I will be trying this out on the Odin 2 portal when mine comes in in a few weeks, so watch out for that. So of course the performance is going to fluctuate here. We're down to only around 5 to 15 FPS right now now. But once again, we can go in and tweak these settings later, but just straight out of the box with no tweaking whatsoever, you can run Grand Theft Auto 5 on your Android device, which I think is incredible. So that is Game Hub on the Retroid Pocket 5 and any Android device you may own. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and subscribe if you didn't already. I will definitely be jumping into more games on Game Hub over the next few days, and I purposely picked some of the trickier ones for this video in order to give you some hints and tips. But most of the other games I tried worked much better than the ones I showed today. So I will love showing those to you over the next few days too. So make sure you subscribe for that. I have recently started a Patreon and Ko-fi page, so check those out in the links below. There are various membership tiers you can join and various bonuses you can unlock, such as beautiful Discord roles and exclusive live streams with me. And I would like to thank these patrons on screen right now for helping me so much so far. My supporters, my heroes, and the legends, Alex Sawyer, Noel, Andrew Becker, Chris Ryan, Hero Prinny, Jester the Pester, great name, Kevin Wagner, Paul Curtis, Tommy Woods and Vitor S. Thank you so much for helping me make these videos. As some of you know, my YouTube monetization is having some issues right now. I am getting it fixed, but for now I'm not making any money. So thank you so much to the people who join my Patreon and Ko-fi pages. You're really helping me bring these videos out often. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to pick up your own Retroid Pocket 5, as you saw in this video, you can also check out my affiliate link in the description to the official Retroid website, the same place I bought this one. And then I can also get a few dollars of commission. So thank you so much to anyone who does pick up anything from the Retroid store using my link. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you again tomorrow, where we're going to jump into some really exciting content. Thank you for watching. Bye.